So Suresh, last week we saw, um, uh, we discussed the role of a consumer yeah. in, economy, in the economy. Yeah. And consumer, of course, that means consumption. Yeah. Uh, consumer means consumption. Yeah. Consumption, we I identified consumption of different households. We looked at yeah. what the basket consumption basket looks for, yeah. different types of houses, how it changes yeah. uh, with time and with income and there is other things. Right. And the, theoretically, we tried to underpin it by two concepts. One is that of utility, which tells you yeah. uh, how a consumer uh, tries to gain satisfaction, I suppose, yeah. Huh? With, yeah. Uh, by consuming. Yeah. And uh, their objective, I guess, is to maximize utility, utility. in some sense. Yeah. And then we said, how do we do look at this aggregation of this consumption into a notion of a demand? Yeah. Right? How does the demand link to uh, other other income, other, fac uh, other factors, factors which really affect uh, this demand, or, uh, price, price of related goods, of goods. yeah, or maybe some other kind of factors, interesting factors like, for example, women making decisions. We saw, yeah, yeah. So maybe some trends or some yeah. other things, taste like and preferences taste. over time. So that gives us a picture of the consumer side. Yeah. Now uh, this week we want to talk about the other side. Yeah. Uh, the two. It's a two-agent model. Yeah. The other side is the firm or yeah. producer. Yeah. Um, so, can, I mean, is there a similar picture that one can draw, just like this consumption pattern for a household? Yes. Is there a similar picture we can draw for the firm? Yeah. On the producer side. Yeah. So uh, there, um, see, we we saw the demand side of the market. In the market, there are two agents: the 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 uh, person who demands and the person who supplies. Mm. Now, from the demand side, now we cross over to the supply, supply side. side. So, exactly we find a lot of parallels here. Mm. For example, um, the objective of a consumer is to maximize utility, mm. while the objective of a person who supplies or a firm in our model is to maximize profits. Mm. Mm. We are not talking about philanthropic firms. <laughs> we are talking about yeah. firms which there is an objective of mm. profit, Pro profit, profit maximization. Mm. So, we find that this, when we cross over to this side of the market, there are a lot of similarities, mm. but um, exactly like a, a demand curve, there is also a supply curve, right? And there are factors that affect supply, yeah. And uh, perhaps the most important variable that affects supply is cost of producing. Okay. Depending on the cost of production, you actually decide in terms of how much to supply, what to supply in what kind of a market you want to supply. Uh, if we recollect our earlier discussions, we were talking about, you know, certain segments in the market where you want to pitch your product, you know, bottom of the pyramid or what. all this kind of decisions in terms of, you know, supply or viewing from the supply side of the market then is intimately, intimately related to the concept of cost. Okay. So, co understanding cost then is a prerequisite in terms of understanding supply decisions. So, the the consumption bas the, when we broke down the consumers purchasing in terms of the uh, different types of things the person consumes yeah. based on their income. Yes. They have a budget. Yes. Here the equivalent is that you have to the, see based on their the, equivalent of budget. Yeah, something yeah. The firm has a total set of resources, huh. what we broadly cap call as the capital availability. Okay. And this capital availability will have to be uh, distributed according to the price as well as according to the requirement of the firm to various other components that are used in terms of production and okay. each one of that will have a cost. Uh -huh. So, exactly like what we saw in a consumption basket, there is a, a bouquet of costs cost. now. Oh, that's the parallel. So, yeah. Okay. So, understanding that then is mm -hmm. very important in terms of understanding the supply side. Okay, okay. Uh -huh. So, here actually, uh, GB, I want to ask you one thing. See, you have uh, industry experience. When you are on the other side, viewing this, you know, uh, set of uh, theories and all that we discuss mm -hmm. from an industry's perspective, what are the kind of costs that you actually encountered in the industry? It changes, I think, from industry to industry. Okay. So, since I was part of the IT industry, for us, labor was the obviously the most significant cost could okay. be like 50 percent of revenue was labor cost maybe more also okay but if i guess if it's a manufacturing company there would be materials uh, would also be a very significant labor would be also be a cost okay energy okay. consumption would be a very significant cost okay uh, uh, if it is a fmcg company hmm. 
I mean, something which is like, you know, uh, uh, Hindustan Lever, mm. Nestle, mm. companies which are selling consumer products. Yeah. Their advertising, marketing, mm. sales, that would be a very significant cost. It's not so much for an IT company, the sales and marketing would not be very significant. Okay. But for them, it might be very significant. If it's a pharma, pharmaceutical company, you would see a lot of money being spent on new molecule design, R&D. R&D. Yeah, all okay. that could be okay. very, very significant cost. Okay. So, it dep- I guess it depends quite a lot on the company. Okay. Um, what what kind of company it is. Because, but broadly, there would be these heads, I think, materials, yeah. labor, yeah. Uh, uh, transportation, logistics, oh. and all that. Travel. Okay. In the case of IT, we have travel. What okay. Travel, okay. Uh, for projects. Okay. And, uh, uh, of course, capital costs. Oh, okay. I mean, if you have... If it's a very, um, uh, if it's a manufacturing, la- you need large machines and so on, you have to buy those machines. Okay. Right. So if you're an airline company, you have to buy aeroplanes. Yes. These aeroplanes. Yes. That's a big cost. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, so it depends on the industry. Okay. Right? So I think, I think that's the important point for us, you know, when we say us, for economists to look mm-hmm. at, because the uh, types of costs actually vary from industry to industry. Just like in consumption, right? Just like in consumption. Consumption changes from person to person. person, to person. From uh, industry to industry, there is a variation in the types of cost that, cost. that we see. One. Two, uh, it also could vary according to the size of the firm, small it firms, yeah. large yeah. firms. Right. Yeah. 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 Of course, yeah. Three, uh, it could also vary uh, depending upon the technology that is available for production for each firm, hmm. because ultimately technology is a determinant of cost. No? Right. Mm-hmm. So, uh, then uh, let me try and uh, draw some generalizations based on this point that, that you just raised. That is, there could be variations across industries, mm. but then there are some common costs mm. or some generalizations can be drawn mm. looking at industries as well as firms. Now, I am going to, I am going to draw some generalizations. Afterwards, you come back and tell me in actual reality, is this the kind of thing that you encounter in industry? Okay. Now, um, so uh, let me uh, start with some, yeah, uh, some basic difference from uh, an economist as an ac- and an accountant. An economist sees this whole notion of cost from a very broader angle. That is, um, there is a concept of opportunity cost in economics. Okay. W- what do we mean by opportunity cost? We'll just come to that in a moment, but. Um, resources have multiple uses. So, if you are using resources for one particular activity, then you are foregoing some other activity mm. for which it could have utilized. Mm-hmm. So, there is a cost of foregoing something mm. that is the opportunity cost that we talk about. So, uh, economists always view uh, everything in terms of opportunity cost, there is a trade off. Whereas, for an accountant, Accountant says that, well, um, it is not directly visible to us. Yeah, where is it getting reported? Right. At the end of the day, we have to see it. To see the voucher. Then only, <laughs> then only we <laughs> can the bill. see, see the, the bill. Yeah. So, there is a difference between accounting concepts and economists. Hmm. Now, uh, for an economist, there are three uh, important aspects in the revenue of a firm. Hmm. There, there is a set of explicit costs. There is a set of implicit costs, and I'll elaborate on what is this explicit and implicit in a minute. And then there is economic profit. For an accountant, there is only explicit cost. Implicit thing is it's not visible, Signal. so it, it it's just not you know you have to at the end of the day you have to have it in numbers. Hmm. So they will look at explicit costs, and of course there is a concept of accounting profit. Hmm. Hmm. What they do in accounting profit is to include the implicit cost also into that. Into the profit. Into the profit. Okay. So, their accounting profit will always be high, mm. whereas a, an economic profit concept will always be less. Mm, 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 mm. So, that is that's a kind of a tension between economists and accountants. Mm. And perhaps uh, if I say there is one place where economists and accountants converge in terms of this is the budget of a country, mm. because ultimately budget is an accounting statement. Mm. Economists might talk of big, big theories and things of that sort, but at the end of the day, an accountant might turn back and ask that, well, uh, uh, give it to, to me in numbers. An economist might say that, look, your numbers are approximations, you know, conceptually it is like this and all, but in real life, you have to deal with numbers. 
So, what, what we shall do is to translate some of these concepts into numbers also mm -hmm. towards the end of our discussions today. Okay. So, what are the broad types of cost that we that, that we can generalize? One, as we just talked about, opportunity cost and an actual cost. Mm -hmm. Then there is direct and indirect, which is in terms of you know, a variant of explicit and implicit. Then there is historical and replacement. I will come to that. Then we draw some generalizations on the basis of fixed and variable costs. We just talked about labor costs and we talked about the cost of uh, capital, Machine plant and machinery, yeah. which is a fixed cost, whereas labor cost could be a variable cost. So, variable cost basically means that you, if the revenue comes down, you can reduce the yeah, cost, the, but the, labor is, you can't reduce the labor cost. Yeah, the variability is in, is in a relation with the quantity of output that is produced. Ah, yeah. If you want to increase your output, you should have more, more of labor, labor, more of materials. Mm. Given the capacity of the machine that you have already purchased. Mm. Mm. So, there we need to complicate a little in terms of the time factor which we which we talk about this fixity and variability. Perhaps, you know, uh, in the long run everything is variable. Mm. Mm. So, we need to bring in the concept of a long run and a short okay. run. Okay. Yeah. And then there is the total average marginal so cost. Typical variable cost, materials and labor are considered variable. Yes. Travel and all would be variable. I presume. Yes. Uh, but uh, capital equipment, Ma machinery, I, I, land for the factory, land purchasing land, all that, are, all that. Taking long-term leases. Yeah. All yeah. these are fixed costs. All cost. that would be fixed costs. Yeah. Okay. Now but something like rent and all would be. Rent will be a variable cost because you can always decide to give up the lease. Yeah. Or and then you can actually take, uh, when you expand production, you can take additional, additional things for rent. Additional. Yeah. So, converting some, so instead of buying something, if you rent something, you are actually moving cost from the fixed head to the variable. variable head. Yeah. Which means that you have some control over right. controlling the cost. Controlling the cost. Yeah. Okay. Why? Because controlling cost is very important for increasing your profits. Hmm. So, firms are and when we see some of the numbers on certain industries you no know, we'll we'll see an industry where there is very high fixed cost for example cement mm. then we'll see how they are controlling costs and because of controlling costs we'll see how their profits are have increased mm -hmm. now um, so let me just run through this quickly just just a one line concept basically so opportunity cost is nothing but the cost incurred for losing the next best alternative and that is a concept of trade off that we talked about. Yeah. And uh, you are giving up something to get something else. So, what you are giving up has a cost and that you are actually imputing. And, and you have multiple choices. So, if you choose one over the other, the cost of other is imputed. That is the concept of opportunity cost. Actual cost is nothing but actual amount paid as opposed to estimated or standard cost. Mm. So, you, you have an estimated cost. And then actually you pay out might be might be slightly different from this cost. So, uh, when an uh, accountant looks at this whole cost thing, they look at actual costs. Mm. They do not look at estimated costs. Then implicit and explicit costs, we talked about this, but it refers to the money that is basically expended to uh, buy or hire resources from outside the organization. So, resources can be from within the organization and resources can be from outside the organization. So, anything that is from out is buying, that, uh, is there, no? um, that is a that is another production decision. Okay. Depending on this available resources, you have to decide hmm. whether you can buy or you can make. But this is about whether or not this is the cost that is hidden because it is inside the regular. No. You may be using some very, resources that are in the organization. Yes, a very simple kind of an example uh, GV is, um, well, I have some capital with me. Hmm. I can use that capital to buy a machinery. Okay. But at the same time, I can actually, you know, uh, be a risk of slightly risk averse entrepreneur and say that, look, my money I do not need to take, but I can borrow from the bank and start a business. Okay. Now, borrowing from the bank is a resource that is outside my purview. Okay. So, there is an outflow. When I take my own money, there is no outflow okay. of, of, of interest payments or anything. Cash, yeah. cash outflows. It is cash outflows. Okay. And that is why it is called explicit. Okay. Whereas, implicit cost is a cost of cell phone resources of organization that are used in, in production. Right. And uh, in the in the small firms so can't… Cash outflows, because you can't see it from, yeah. from outside from you can't see this. And in the context of small firms in developing economies, such an implicit cost is the family labor. Right. 
yeah in a family run enterprise Correct. the entire family comes Even in in startups the entrepreneur basically does a lot of work and doesn't yeah all that will paid for it. all that all that will come as and the implicit cost, cost. yeah okay. now uh, direct and indirect uh, is basically direct costs are those costs that have accountable to very specific cost object hmm. that is you know wages salaries very specific head of accounting indirect could be in terms of you know um, which are not directly accountable yeah but it is related to production for example uh, maintenance and uh, you know insurance certain certain insurance right, coverage right, right. all that are not going to the production process directly mm -hmm. but is a cost so what is this the pe people say cost of goods sold right cost of goods mm -hmm. so direct cost will be cost of goods and indirect cost will not be cost no no right. no indirect cost would be a is a yeah is is an outflow mm. but it is not contributing to the production process directly, directly. yeah that is what it is yeah okay. <coughs> both are part of cost of both of both, both of, are part of cost of cost of yeah for example i have produced something mm. now when i am transporting in a truck to my market mm. i might have an insurance for that product ah, ah, ah. but that's also mm. a cost for the firm correct correct, correct. Yeah, but it is not fuel. A, it's not fuel and it's not fuel or fuel. anything yeah uh it is also not the cost of transporting this insurance which i am having for my product mm -hmm. is over and above the production cost yeah. but for a firm it is an outflow correct, correct, correct. so from an enterprise or a firm's point of view it is a cost mm -hmm. now you can choose to avoid that and send the material without insurance mm -hmm. but that's a risk that one takes kind of a thing right, right, right. so all those kind of things come under this indirect cost then there are two important concepts which we need to keep in mind when we talk about production and that is uh, historical cost and replacement cost historical cost actually refers to the actual cost when you are purchasing an asset mm. that is i am starting this firm uh, in 2021 and i am i am purchasing land for this factory what i am paying out in 2021 is the cost that that is historical cost why do we say historical because 5 years later when i take some decision of you know expanding my um, operations or moving from one location to another location and all in my balance sheet this is what is accounted in 2021 so and so purchased land for 1 crore or whatever it is so from that point of view it is called historical but replacement cost is the price uh, that is required for replacing an an asset at the current market price uh -huh. that is 5 uh -huh. years later Value may be more or less. You know. Maybe more or less. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so that why why is this important? This is important because if you are planning little ahead in terms of your production process, we always need to account for replacement costs. Right. Because one one simple aspect of production is that every machinery will have a wear and tear, hmm. and every machinery, like you know, all its machinery at the end of the day is a living kind kind of a of a creature. and uh, it might die down that is the machine might just fall sick and then it will stop producing so you have to replace that machine mm. when you go out to replace that machine you have to pay the market price prevailing in I that year mm. to buy a new machinery mm. so that is the kind of of a concept called replacement cost that we use so if you use the historical cost to calculate your unit cost profit yeah. profit the profit yeah then suddenly when you do the replacement of the machine you will no longer be profitable yeah so, so Right? Yes. The price is gone up. Yes. So that is why firms bring in this whole the notion of replacement cost, of replacement cost okay. and uh, they will uh, set aside an element of depreciation every year, mm. so that at the end of the life of suppose the life of a machine is fifteen years, mm. at the end of the fifteenth year there is enough resources available to buy a new machine. Ah, uh, there's a reserve, depreciation reserve. Reserve. Yeah. So you are putting into the kitty right oh, from kitty, saving some money year one for replacement. Right for replacement. yeah okay. so historical in historical values i would have bought a machinery for 5 crores mm. but after 15 years it would have been 20 crores or whatever it is mm. so you you calculate the inflation factor mm. and then you have a projected value and then you set aside little money right from the year 1 so that at the end of this 15th or 20th year you have enough resources to buy a new machine so that's where this whole historical and replacement cost analysis becomes very important now um uh then we come to a little theoretical concepts of fixed and variable cost which is which is all discussed in earlier concepts as well but we are trying to put it together into a, a big heading kind of a thing 
Fixed cost remains unchanged irrespective of the output level. That is, when I am purchasing a machinery, there is a capacity for the machinery. My 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 uh, my uh, enterprise is, for example, a coffee shop. So I bought this coffee vending machine. This coffee vending machine has a capacity in an hour it can produce so many coffees. Coffees. Now, uh, then it is up to me, depending on the demand, whether I should produce. So, there's, for example, in an hour, let us assume that this machine can can generate uh, 100 cups of coffee. Mm. Depending on the demand, I can stop at 20 mm. or I can go to 80, mm. 90. Mm. But if the demand all of a sudden increases to 140 or 120, sorry, my machine cannot actually take Sir, that. Right. So, I will have to buy another machine. buy another machine or I will have to buy from somewhere else yeah. coffees and then distribute to my clients. Mm. All these make or buy decisions then become very important. Mm. So, fixed cost is the cost that is incurred irrespective of the out, output level or sales revenue. Okay. Now, so an example of that is basically interest that we pay, mm. your borrowed capital to buy this coffee making machine. Mm. Now, you have to pay whether my sales is good or bad, I have to yeah. And that is a big kind of a thing, especially in the context of COVID crisis now, now, because I, I would have taken this uh, loan to buy, uh, especially in the context of MSMEs to buy uh, equipment, you have to, you have to, you have to, running, you, have to pay. you have to pay the loan and you have to keep uh, servicing the loan. So, uh, fixed costs are those kind of costs. Variable costs are those that vary depending on the company's production volume. Right. For example, in my coffee making machines example, uh, when I am making 20 coffees, then I need only 1 person to serve to the 20 people who are there. Mm. But if, if the demand increases to 45, mm. then this 1 person cannot reach. Mm. So, I will have to hire one more worker. Mm. So, that is a variable cost. So, today the demand is 40. I have hired one more worker. Tomorrow, if the demand comes down to 25, I can ask this worker to leave. Mm. depending on my contractual agreement with that worker. Mm. Mm. So, that is why it is variable. Mm. Mm. So, all such costs, they, they actually uh, increase as a part of the production and falls when the production also falls is variable cost. Mm. Classic example of that is energy and mm. materials, mm. input costs mm. and mm. energy, the use of energy varies with your correct, production. Correct. So, uh, then finally, we have a concept of you know, real cost and prime cost. Now, uh, real cost is basically uh, the physical quantities of various factors. For example, uh, the carpenter's labor that is going to the uh, production of this table mm. or the cubic feet of wood that is required to produce this. Yeah, all that, all that in real terms if we quantify. Yeah, so basically we are trying to account the material balances in this, mm. Mm. not in terms of money terms. Yeah. This is not a very, uh, very commonly used kind of a, of a concept, mm -hmm. but in terms of earlier uh, planned economic system, mm -hmm. we, we wanted this because in a planned economy, everything was planned. Mm -hmm. How much of cars should be produced is planned. And the price will be fixed by it. Everything is, price also is by, the, by the planner. planner. So, then you need to have an idea of each of these items, how, items, many, nails, how many, many nails you need to produce in an economy, etc. Right, correct, correct. So, that is why this is this is very, very useful at that point. And prime cost is nothing but uh, the cost of a commodity in terms of materials and which includes the fix, which includes only the variable costs, yeah, but is exclude the fixed cost within this whole, you know, uh, uh, cost concept that we discussed that is in real cost. So, let me uh, let me give an example of this. Um, you have you have uh, produced something, and then over and over you incur a selling cost. That is, there is a cost that is incurred to sell that product in the market mm -hmm. to to earn the profit. Now that is to be added in your total costs. See, okay. So when we talk about prime cost, it involves not only production cost but also this whole other costs that are associated to earn this revenue. Okay. And that is very important when we talk about uh, different industries, no? FMCG and other things. Mm -hmm. In certain industries, there is huge uh, advertisement costs. And in certain industries, it, there is a bundling of, of certain commodities, which also requires some kind of you know, cost outlays. Mm 